Tonight on the docket, whatever happened to the dollar? As the Federal Reserve continues to print more and more money, the dollar's value steadily declines. And as the Fed meddles with the market, inf- with the market inflation rears its ugly head, affecting initially the prices of food and fuel, and therefore affecting your pocketbook. Of course, when the Federal Reserve measures inflation, it omits food and fuel. How convenient. In 1913, the Federal Reserve system was created. For most of the history of this country, we've endured without a Federal Reserve. And the Great Depression, of course, of course, occurred under the Federal Reserve's watch. In 1971, President Richard Nixon took the United States off the gold standard so that the dollar could become the fiat currency of the world, backed by nothing but empty promises from the, federal, from the governments, which continue to think we can print our way to prosperity. This established a dangerous precedent, as eventually all currencies around the world became fiat currencies, money that derives its value from the whims and empty promises of the governments. What can we do to return to an era of sound money? What does it mean to have money we can trust? The guests in tonight's show will tell us how we can return to a gold standard, what a currency free, f- free from influence of government would look like, and why we should audit and ultimately end the Federal Reserve System. These issues are crucial to the fight in the fight to stop the federal government from spending more money than it takes in, handicapping our children, our grandchildren, and future generations. Here to discuss all this is a man who has single-handedly educated the nation to the evils of worthless money and to the dangers of a central bank with a printing press, and who continues to believe that fighting for economic liberties is just as important as fighting for civil liberties. Who else? But Texas Republican Congressman and Republican presidential hopeful Ron Paul. Congressman Paul, as always, a pleasure. Welcome to this special edition of Freedom Watch on money. Thank you very much. Congressman, what would happen in a Ron Paul presidency if we were to return to the gold standard? How soon could this happen and how would it happen? Well, I wish you could do it overnight and you could do a few things like repealing uh, or you getting rid of the executive order of Nixon, but that in itself wouldn't be enough. You know, we know what to do. We did it once after the Civil War period. We went from, uh, you know, a paper standard back to a gold standard and the event wasn't that, that dramatic. Uh, but today, the big problem is that uh, both the conservatives and liberals have a big appetite for government for different reasons. Therefore, they need the Fed to tide them over and monetize the debt. So if you don't get rid of that appetite, it's going to be more difficult. But the transition isn't that difficult. You have to get your house in order. You have to balance the budget. You have to not run up debt. And you have to promise not to print any more money. And that's what they did after uh, the Civil War. And it was accepted. And we went right back to the gold standard. But that, is, that is the biggest challenge. So, so it's difficult. I would like to have a transition period and just legalize gold, you know, gold money and allow us to use gold and silver as legal tender and we could work our way back. Well, I, I have to agree with you, but I would even go a step further and say if if gold and silver were became currency, that would drive paper money out of it. Who would want the paper money when you had real gold and real silver out there? Well, if it was if it if it was a fixed exchange rate, sure, we would never pay our bills off with the gold. We'd pay it off with the paper uh, because uh, it drives the good money uh, out of cir- circulation. But let's say you don't. Let's say you want a checking account and you want to deal with with gold. You could put your money in, and uh, you could buy and sell in gold and save in gold. So it would be parallel rather than having a fixed uh, exchange rate between the two. If you tried to fix them. Uh, it w- wouldn't work. Right. Now, I- is this a pipe dream or might you and I at some time in the near future actually be able to show up at the gold window, if it's still there, the one that Richard Nixon closed in 1971, and hand whoever's on the other side of the window dollar bills and receive from that person the equivalent in the then fair market value of actual gold or actual silver? Might that happen? Well, it might, but you'd have to be completely on the gold standard, and they wouldn't be parallel standards. That would be that would be the goal, uh, but that's not on the near horizon. But that should be the goal. But what we want to do is actually legalize the use of gold and silver as the Constitution dictates, rather than punishing the people right. who who try to do that. That's where the the real dilemma is. But yes, it will come about. The system here, I'm quite convinced that the system we have here will not be maintained and that's what these last four years is all about and that's what the turmoil in Europe is all about so this will end the question is are they going to move toward a constitutional form of money or are we going to go another step further into international money 
instead of having an international gold standard based on the market, are we going to go toward a UN IMF standard where they're going to control uh, with the use of force another fiat can't standard? That's what the many people are working for. I consider that a very, very dangerous move. The last time uh, you proposed uh, that the Federal Reserve should be audited. You had more than half the House of Representatives agreeing with the proposal, and it passed overwhelmingly. Even some of your polar opposites ideologically were agreeing with you. And as you know, r right on after you on this show to talk about this is Congressman uh, Dennis Kucinich. Where does this stand in this Congress this time around? Are we going to get a real, serious, true audit of the Federal Reserve because everybody, liberals, conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, libertarians, progressives, have had enough. Well, I wish I could tell you that we're better off now since uh, we're in charge of the House, but unfortunately we're not moving. Sometimes these things are done in a partisan manner. Where these bills to audit the Fed used to come through the Domestic Monetary Policy Subcommittee, of which I am the chairman, has no longer been directed to that committee, but it's gone, it has been sent over to government oversight. So I have been hamstrung to a degree on actually pushing that type of legislation. That means their heart is not in it, and that means we need a lot more work for the people to put the pressure on the members of Congress. That's why we did get so far last time, because we mobilized the people, and they were telling their members of Congress, you better support the position of auditing the Fed. But right now, there's a lot more talk about the super committee and, and how they're going to mess around with the budget and the pretense that all they're actually going to cut. Right, he, That's dominating the news. Well, when you and I first met, which was a long time ago, you may have been the only member of Congress talking about auditing the Fed. But am I hearing you say, Congressman Paul, that there might actually be more resistance from Republicans, particularly the Republican leadership in the House of Representatives, than anybody else to this vital piece of legislation to reveal secrets that everybody has a right to know? I don't have concrete evidence. I haven't had a statement, but I do know that uh, I could have had more jurisdiction than I had, have now. I've had it in the past. The committees have always have had it in the past, but it's gone in a different direction uh, this time. So, so there is a difference. So I, I think that uh, uh, when a push comes to shove, there are people at the leadership of both the Republicans and the Democratic parties have too much at stake to mess around with the Federal Reserve unless there's a political uh, uh, gamesmanship play in there and they can gain some politics out of it. Understood. Congressman Ron Paul, as always, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge. Perhaps the most notable politician